number one, uh, iPhone calendar. I've segmented um, key areas of my life, not just from a work point of view, but also family, social aspects that go in there. That's uh, the color yellow. So I've segmented to different colors. Um, I've got my Prepare Like a Pro work or any um, podcast that I've got coming up. So that's all in the iPhone calendar. So I've got an idea of what times I've segmented to certain days. Number two, once you've got that schedule and you know your um, your themes for each day, then I think it's helpful and it's quite powerful and there's research on this to write down what's most important, your non-negotiables for that day. So I'll just use a simple notepad like I use for my notes when I'm uh, about to do a presentation or a podcast and uh, I just yeah, write down all the big areas that I want to focus on, not in a hell of a lot of detail, uh, but just the areas that I need to focus my energy on that day because you can easily get caught up into um, little tasks and putting out fires here and there when you're running your own business. Um, but you, you want to make sure that when you walk away from uh, the day and the day is done and you put the, the notepad down or the uh, computer down that you've uh, focused your energy on what's most important and what's going to move the needle for, you, for your business. So number three, filter your tasks for low, medium and high energy tasks. I used to use Trello. However, I found it took too much time um, managing Trello uh, and it actually drained from productivity. So that's where for me, I just use my uh, iPhone notes and I'll have simple low energy tasks. And you can hashtag now with the iPhone to search for your, your low energy tasks. I'll have medium energy tasks and then I'll have high energy tasks. The high energy tasks are the things that you want to be uh, at your best and require the most amount of energy and also are most important for your business. So for those, I'll do those typically first thing in the morning um, when, my, when my mind is sharpest. For the low energy tasks, I can pretty much do this at any time. So I'll just you know, do that. Um, maybe you, you're public transport. Um, you might be going walking the dog. Uh, you might be training. Why coaches must embrace messiness and also uh, encourage chaos in your um, program. And, and it's important, um, not just from an athlete development point of view, but also to help bridge the gap between strength and conditioning and playing their sport. So for example, for Australian rules football, it is an extremely chaotic sport. It's, it's contact. It's a massive oval. There's 36 players on the ground, 360 degrees. So it is literally chaos everywhere for every second of the game. So we want to make sure that, um, yes, athletes know what a successful rep, like a hip hinge, feels like. But once they know what a successful rep feels like, feel free to put constraints in, in place that they're going to make mistakes. They're going to fail. Uh, let them fall on their face because it's going to be the strongest um, feedback for them to be able to make sure they get it right the next time. So let them work out how to uh, how they can find the most effective strategy. Um, so what you'll find with this implicit based learning, number one, athletes are learning a really great lesson, lesson for, that they need to work it out themselves and find a way, just like on the football field. Number two, you're going to get better carry over to on-field performance in terms of their movement mechanics because they're never moving the same all the time on the field. So that movement variability is key. Uh, and then number three, that failing feedback is going to be the strongest message. They don't want to be falling on their face two times in a row. It's embarrassing. So it's a really strong message for uh, athletes to make sure they get the next rep right, where if it's too easy, then it becomes fluffy and athletes just go through the motion. They switch off, they get into autopilot mode and I'm sure coaches out there have seen that before. So if you know that movement is too fluffy and that didn't get the desired effect, that's okay. Next time, make sure you put a constraint in place to challenge that athlete and straight away, they're going to enjoy it more. You're going to enjoy it because it's going to have a better vibe, a better energy in the gym. 